All right, welcome to this iteration of our bi-weekly KCP community meeting. I'm glad to see so many people here. Um, that's, I think, a very high number for our for our usual statistics. I'm glad to see you all here. Um, as always, this meeting is governed by the CNCF Code of Conduct, which boils down to let's be excellent to each other. So please try to, or like, please follow that rule. Please not try to, but please follow that easy rule. Um, with that being said, we, um, is there anyone who would like to introduce themselves? Hey, I will take maybe at a time. I'm Carol. I'm interested in KCP project, and soon I will be uh, working on some of the topics. Um, so, hi everyone. I'm working currently as a software engineer at Kubernetes. I'm looking forward to cooperate with you. All right. Thank you very much, Carol. And well, <laughs> welcome to this group. Uh, we already know each other. <laughs> Um, all right, great. With that, why don't we get started? Um, the first topic on the agenda is actually mine, and then I can shut up and let other people talk. Um, but the first one is a topic. Um, so internally here at Kubernetes, we developed a syncing component that we uh, dubbed Servlet. Um, we've been notified that that name might create some flashbacks with, I think, Java developers. Um, so we are very open to, you know, other name, names that just basically came up, uh, came up as a combination of, hey, let's l name something like a kubelet and we're publishing services. We can also call it Bob. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, but basically what I would like to do is we are thinking of, um, whether donating that uh, component to the KCP project makes sense. And well, the bar for that is, is there any interest in the community to have this component maintained under the KCP umbrella? Because if it's something that's too specific uh, to what we are building, obviously, then, you know, maybe it doesn't make sense. Can you maybe share a bit of light on what this component does exactly? Yes, exactly. So um, basically, uh, what we've built is this idea, or we came from the idea of, okay, uh, many people will already have Kubernetes clusters. They're already running some form of operator, some of some form of controller, um, and they might want to run these things on the Kubernetes clusters, which we internally like call service clusters. And they want to publish APIs, so CIDs that they have on these clusters into KCP to make them available for consumption across workspaces. And the servlet component does exactly that. So the servlet component is something that runs on these, let's say, physical Kubernetes clusters that run specific services through CIDs through some form of operator. And they publish, CID, uh, they, they basically take the CIDs, they convert them to API resource keepers, they, um, the, the servlet, uh, publishes that to an API export that exists in KCP. So basically takes over an existing API export. And then it creates a syncing bridge, basically, where if I create resources from that API export after binding it to a workspace, they get synced down to a Kubernetes cluster okay. that is running the servlet component. And I can, I can very quickly show this. Um, to basically, you know, just show you how it's running. So let me quickly jump into my terminal. If assuming that Google Meet will find it. Um, all right, here we go. Stefan, if you're talking, you're on mute. All right, maybe not trust then. Um, okay, uh, so so basically um, the servlet comes in the form of a Helm chart. So I have an existing Kubernetes cluster here and that Kubernetes cluster is running a couple of CIDs 
um, now I can look at the CIDs. Uh, most notably, maybe in this example, I'm running Cert Manager here. And let's assume that I want to publish Cert Manager. And it, this is just an example CID. So really, Cert Manager is probably the least useful thing to publish here. Um, we're thinking more in terms of like maybe some database operator, uh, maybe something with cross-plane, uh, but you know, just I just wanted to publish a CID, so I, I set this up. And basically, um, the servlet, uh, so first of all, on the KCP side, so on KCP, let me make this also a bit bigger. Um, so on the KCP side, I am in, in, a, in, in a workspace and I have an API ex export that I created beforehand. And so this API export is now what I want, want to point myself to, to publish APIs into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the servlet. It's a Helm chart. Um, I also pre-provisioned this namespace. I can quickly show this. I pre-provisioned this namespace here with a cube config that points to KCP because that's what the servlet needs to uh, connect to KCP. Um, so now if I do this, it's going to take a second. Then the servlet component will start up. So it's already running. Um, and the servlet component takes like on this local cluster on this cluster from which I want to want to provision a service into KCP or like publish a service into KCP. Um, it takes a resource that is called published resource. And that is here. And there's a lot of explanation in here, but the, the important bits is basically that I'm telling it to please take the certificate API resource that's coming from Cert Manager and publish it into KCP. There's a couple of rules basically that you need to set because we're doing some kind of projection here. There needs to be a naming scheme involved. And um, we have some other features in this, like syncing related resources. So in the certificate example, and this is why it's like nice to use this here, um, my output kind of, of the of like creating a certificate order is getting a secret back. And the syncing mechanism, this related resource syncing mechanism that we have basically can can pick up on that and say, okay, my output is a secret, and I'm gonna sync that back to KCP after the certificate has been processed on the on the cluster um so basically that's what all the rules that you need to like define for the server to follow and if i apply this now it will pick up the cd and will convert it and will send it up to kcp so if i now look at this api export that i've created so just to recap this is on the edge cluster, on a pure Kubernetes yep. clusters. Okay. So we, we we call them service clusters because basically the idea is to hide the or to abstract away where like a service provider is running their um their like actual implementation of a service. But yeah, edge cluster would also I think be a proper term for that. Um. Yeah. So the API export has been updated and has a resource schema here now. And that is basically something that the server did for me. Um, so now, um, basically, and you can also see that it annotated itself here with a unique name, just to say, hey, I'm the servlet taking care of this API export. And well, now what I can do is I'm in my workspace here. And I always forget what the command to do it is, sorry. Um, API export, and I think it should be like this. So now I'm binding to that API export. And I'm not sure why it's not finishing the bind. So that's the demo god sitting me, I think. Can you show uh, scroll a bit above while we still 
hoping for demigods too, like the binding itself, the one yeah. which, which was produced. The yeah, export, you mean? Yep. Mm -hmm. So basically, it created a resource schema and it also knows about permission clients because you said, okay, I want secrets to be synced back as related resources. It also created them like appropriate permission claims. So does um, the other way around, like uh, KCP, it takes from cluster resources and exposes them as API export on KCP. Exactly. Yeah. And now, okay, got it. And now the question is why this did not work. So let's see. Last debugging. Great. Uh, ah, yes, I bound to the wrong API export, of course. This is in. If you do it the wrong way, it surprisingly does not work. Um, this is what we want, I think. Oh, that was my workspace, right? Oh, where is it? I don't know. Okay, perfect. Okay, now it worked. Uh, and now basically what I can do is now I'm in my KCP workspace. Um, the certificate resource has been published here. Um, and there's some transformation that you can do um, in the server. So for example, what you can see here is that this is now, where are we here? Where is my certificate here? Uh, here's my certificate resource, but it's no longer in the cert manager API group. It's now in a different API group because I'm doing this projection. So you can basically choose what API group you're publishing here. And now if I create, I think it should be this file. Yes, um, so if I create now a certificate here, um, it's going to be synced to the cluster on which my on which the server is running. So if I look at this, um, it is not yet here. Perfect. Everything that is that can go wrong is going wrong in this. Uh, okay. Sometimes you need to give it a kick. So this is not without fault. Um, it is just a prototype that we wanted to show. Uh, but I, I, I just narrate over this. Um, so, so basically what it now does, it creates the certificate. It pros like basically it allows such a cert manager on this cluster to process it. Um, it picks up on the related resource. So the, the secret that it's like supposed to produce that this your TLS certificate and takes that and syncs it back up to KCP. Um, and this is basically, you know, all that it does. So I think we should now have a certificate here. Yes. So you can see it created one here um, that is being synced from uh, from the from the name uh, sorry from uh, from the KCP workspace that I bound the API to. So this is basically what we've built. And um, the question is, this, is this useful? Does this make sense? Um, because I think we're changing a bit how, you know, where the syncer runs and, you know, basically where it takes the API from. And um, then, for example, the TMC syncer. So I'm just curious what, what others think about this. Actually, that was my maybe naive question here. If it is similar to the previous syncer that was available in KCP, well, this is a different concept altogether. Um, someone can correct me here, but I think the the previous TMC syncer that was well specific to the to that use case to you know sync deployments and all that down to the physical clusters. And um, this is more like a generic like publish whatever API you want um, syncing solution. Okay. I think the term syncer is overloaded. We're using yeah. it for any directional object move, basically, at this point. So does it has only, like, your mode of operation is, let's call it a cube, pure cube cluster, edge cluster, to KCP. And at that point, KCP can make it one-to-many, like act as a service provider. 
does it has the other way around like a syncing from kcp to clusters um well i mean the sync is bi-directional in some way right so so basically you create an object in kcp it gets synced to the edge cluster to be processed there and then the really the real sorry the related resources can optionally be synced back to kcp but these are usually like kind of like outputs like generated resources yeah. from the one that you've created i'm thinking more of the and i think this is what you're trying to do in a way like you have this service provider cluster which basically does the certificate emitting so it produces hundreds of certificates now we land as api export you bind it to hundreds of thousands of workspaces where each and every of those workspaces requests a certificate and we get secret and produce for that certificate in that workspace and now you want to see basically sync those to the some other kind of cluster out there like you spun out i mean that, but, that sync like the the sync that happens basically after you know you have all the information kcp that's not really covered by it so you you could like take another syncing solution i guess and sync it further if you want to have it somewhere else but the kcp installation then becomes your kind of or your centralized hub to 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 basically sync things from i don't know uh, what other people think but i i like what they see like i already have like few ideas what i could build on top of that and i think there are some very interesting questions in this model for example you know can you uh, like how do you stretch offering a service across multiple kubernetes clusters so servlets would need to coordinate in some way and you know coordinate which apis they publish and all of these things we haven't answered in this yet um so maybe the model has some limitations uh, but i think it's an interesting approach at least i mean I was involved in designing it, so maybe not the most neutral person. Um, but yeah, curious to hear any any further thoughts on it. Don't talk everybody at once. I mean, I, I know that, you know, just a 15 minutes demo is maybe also not sufficient. Um, I, and, you know, currently we're like, we have things like building the KCP operator. Like, I think we have plenty of stuff to do already, but maybe, you know, just think about this. And maybe if you want to try it out, also feel free to, to reach out. I'm happy to help out with that. Um, and then we can, you know, maybe keep the discussion going and see if you know if there's any interest woods it's a, it's a silence so we're gonna ask it, this question differently would it be possible maybe to put it to some contrib repository so we don't initially uh, commit to basically being part of kcp we add it at a contrib server servlet or something like that and we try to maintain it as a best effort, basically try where it takes, because being it out, if we can start talking about those, that in a conference, putting into the demos, I think this might generate some ideas in people's head. And if we see it gets adoption, gets GitHub stars and attention, we can basically always promote it to KCP core. I mean, I wouldn't see this as a KCP core component in any in, in in any case to be honest like it's i would see it as a separate project maybe living in the kcp project but like you really don't need to use it if like that kind of thinking is not what you want so i think core should be reserved to you know well okay, kcp I, itself i will fix myself into mono repo not into core because yeah. uh, when we have once we have 10 plus more repositories rebases and life cycle gets harder so anything what we can keep in a mono repo is easier to rebase yeah no no that makes sense um all right just just wanted to put um this thought in everyone's head 
um, it will it would take some time for us to get all the uh, kubernetes specific code or like, like basically remove it from the bigger code base that's currently part of um, but just as a you know outlook and you know looking for some feedback so with that since we have a pretty full agenda i would maybe move on and the next topic on the agenda is a topic by Mesa. So I will hand it over to you. Yes, thanks very much, Marvin. Let me see if I can share my screen. Um, one second. Apparently, I don't have the permissions to share. All right, then let me add you as a co-host. I think now it should work. Let me try. And the browser crashed. It's the one where you need to restart the browser to be able to shift. So, yeah, that, that, I think that's a Mac OS thing. So. Okay, let me try now. The joys of modern software. Perfect. Can you see my screen now? Not yet. Now we can. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> we we are we are just. I think we're seeing the wrong window. We are seeing you're sharing the entire screen, but just the. Just the, the top. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me try again. That's a first. I, I guess it's considered a window. Uh, this little cover. Share this window, share this window. How about now? Yes, not perfect. OK, great. So. What I wanted to do is um, give you a little bit of an introduction about um, our interest in KCP and sort of how um, we would like to use KCP in the larger context of what we're trying to do at SAP. And um, wanted to quickly talk about essentially the use cases where this is coming from. And we've already had some contact with a large number of the maintainers from KCP, so thank you for that. Um, we're really interested in collaborating with you guys on an idea where we have a larger project in terms of open reference architecture for a platform mesh. And the question might be is that what exactly is a platform mesh? Well, the platform mesh itself is really the, an idea that we're targeting for a harmonized API with um, Kubernetes resource model. Okay, We want to have a set of providers, essentially a mesh of providers that can share the services across this mesh using a Kubernetes resource model, uh, essentially via Kubernetes API likes that we then can have and define essentially a centralized service marketplace, also have a standard across um, the way these are exchanged and provide multiple scenarios for consumption as well as a unified control plane and with KCP at its core. So the question that might be is, okay, that sounds all great, but it's still very hard to explain what it is would be. So what I would want to show you is an example, if you imagine how the current typical cloud stack would look like. And you will, of course, have the infrastructure at the very bottom, followed by a platform, which provides all different types of services and capabilities, followed by services on top of those platforms, including the applications themselves. It's all good and fine. But the problem with that is necessarily those have very opinionated APIs and mechanical contracts are you need to communicate with. Them. So the question there would be is, okay, is there another way to maybe unify this and to take it to the next level we are combining all of those APIs into some form of platform? And what you already see is that in the current 
real world out there is that actually a lot of them are already either using Kubernetes to some extent or are based on Kubernetes or have some sort of Kubernetes as an orchestration layer. Um, the question there would be is that why can't this be going the next step further? Why can't you exchange that to say, maybe it can be used a KRM um, as an API and then have all of those then communicate with the unified control plane or maybe a set of control planes. And this is really where KCP would sort of come into place for that. And the idea that we wanted to have is that, okay, you want to have all of these different components that are part of that platform that then also need to have um, control planes and those resources or those components themselves need to be also managed somehow. They also need to, need to be orderable. They also need to then be standardized in some form of way. So you can even think about a specific scenario where you have a manager of a specific service might have an instance and then ask another user and says, you can call this instance and create an instance of it and then have it part of your control plane and you wouldn't have access to this resource. And the same thing goes also vice versa as well from the left hand side and the right hand side. So this way provider A can create service A, provider B can create service B, provider A can use service B as part of its own control plane on the left hand side and provider B can use service A as part of its control plane on the right hand side. And this part of that, of course, is that, well, there are many things that come into place here and KCP is just part of it. We're looking at other projects as well, like Qbind, this looks also very interesting. I think what um, Marvin just shared as well, this also looks very promising. Um, we're primarily then focusing on to look at how to make this possible. We are already close to 10 people who are working on this and we're looking forward to really collaborating with the community here and seeing what we can also maybe help and support KCP in its stability and features that it needs and currently has already to make it work and make it uh, the framework to build the next platforms. So we're looking really forward to working with you guys. Thank you. Was there a question there, I think? All right, I'm not sure if there was a question. Okay. Uh, but, uh, thank you very much, first of all, Mesa for the presentation. Um, SAP is graciously sponsoring already parts of work on KCP. So I think that is great. We're building a community of adopters. And um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if a pair of stickers. Does, that have, does a pair have stickers? Not yet, but I'll, I'll look into it. Thank you very much. No problem, Ad. All right. Are there any questions from Mozar? Okay. Uh, then uh, I just want to say it's just a high level of, uh, idea. Just you know, you'll see some questions from me coming once in a while, but hopefully, at least you don't know where it's coming from. Exactly. I don't think that's great. Um. So now we have uh. We've been, I think, since the project um, has been under community governance, we've been talking about KCP being a framework for building platforms. And I think this is one of hopefully, you know, several platforms to emerge based on this building block. Exactly. And that's what we want to make a realization is to see how can we build the next generation of platforms with KCP in mind. All right, thank you very much. So now moving on, uh, we have a couple of topics on the agenda. Um, I think the next one, one of them is uh, striked out, striked through, uh, striked through, I don't know actually. Um, so the next one, yeah. the next regular one is, I guess, incubator status for the project, MJ. So the striked out one, that was about the warrants. I spoke already with Stefan, basically asked what, what this needs to be done to push this forward. So that's on me now, basically. There is open PR for that, so just for the recording. Now, CNCF one. Uh, 
we know that we discussed in a few previous meetings that at some point we want to jump from uh, sandbox to incubating. And uh, I had a small chat uh, at KubeCon with uh, basically members and asking how, what, how the new procedure looks like, what's the backlog and things like that. Because we've been a bit skeptical saying, okay, maybe we should get more adoption first, more companies on the list. But the message which I was received is we have a huge backlog, raise a ticket now, get into queue and uh, sort out open items as you go. So my question is, do we want to do that potentially in the following weeks? Plus I heard some uh, comments from Kubernetes that we might help to expedite that process too. And we can we can even try to make it to the KubeCon London. So what are people thinking about jumping to incubator? I mean, I I think <laughs> um I'm not sure if making it speed up is like in the interest of us because well we we need the adoption. That is one of the I think pretty hard requirements for incubating. Um Honestly, I got the impression that it's not that hard as it states. Graduating is a big one. Incubating, I, I got the impression that it's not okay. that as it's not that as it be stated. Are there any implications with incubating? Does it mean more administrative tasks, or what exactly does it uh, incur? As far as I know, it gives it gets us more um, support from the CNCF. Right. Um, I think it's also connected to more administrative tasks. Um, I I know that there is a review for sandbox projects that we will you know at some point have to. I think it's like a survey, basically giving a status update to the CNCF, and I think there's like more like that if you're an incubating project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, Simon, you have your hand up. Finish your sentence, please. It was uh, finish yours and then. No, no, I, I was, I was just thinking what I wanted to say, but uh, you're okay. giving me easy way out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Then uh, I'll do that. So one thing I think why so many are now jumping to incubating has to do with the changed rules for maintainers summit. Um. So for everyone who's not in, in the loop, there are new rules for a KubeCon maintainer summit and you need to be an incubating maintainer to submit a CFP for that. And I think this is, I think, or I suspect this is a major reason why many projects are now in queue. Um, and I am with MJ here. I think given that at least getting into the line is a good start with it because I expect the line to become even bigger. And I do think that over time, submitting CFPs to maintainer summits could also be another way to drive adoption or to at least present in a different a type or group of people that we usually have access to. Let's put it like this. Right. And I know that incubating has more marketing support logo starts appearing on the incubating slides everywhere like and you can get booths more like we give more marketing and exposure for sure and that's building stuff and if that means a bit of more management overheads yeah i think it might be a good thing i don't know so maybe sync it off sync offline in a slack and see what people think yeah, I mean, I, I think the, my only concern there would be that if the queue gets processed faster than we anticipate, we might not be ready. And I'm not ah. sure what the implications are of being rejected as a sandbox bird. Oh, sorry, as an, as, 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 I'm not sure what the implications of being rejected, the promotion to incubating is. Like if we can then apply like a year later or so. Or if, I, I think there's no 
direct rejection. I mean, I think Marvin, we can ask Mario def definitely. I think he knows this, these types of stuff. But my understanding is there is no rejection. It just doesn't get approved. It just pushes down down there. It, because yeah. now they have this GitHub queue like project. So we just like drag you down. Yeah, I mean, then let's think offline, but I don't see any reason not to not to put our, our name on the list then. Um, it's yeah. it it will not be like fast today tomorrow we still there is still a quite big sheet and to fill but most of that is check boxes and i went through that most of them we already have so all right yeah then i think that's that's great then then you know that's that, that's maybe try yeah um if you are like on this call or if you are watching this recording, uh, we do have an adopters file in the repository. It's fairly recently. So like while we speak of that topic, um, if you are like an adopter of KCP in some way and you can publicly talk about it, please feel free to add your organization to that file. And then that will also help us with the incubating application because then we will have like the proof that there is adoption of the project. We can do that tomorrow, Marvin. Um, I can add SAP on that. OK, awesome. Great. Let's do that. OK. Let me see. I think there was another. Um, uh, MJ, you have another topic on the agenda. It's more of like a question. So Luke is not in a call, I think. No. So did you talk about his document in the last community meeting or? If I remember correctly, it was uh, either submitted after the community meeting or no, we did not talk about it. Okay. I think it was submitted afterwards. Um, okay. Let me ping him in a chat, see if he wants to do that next community meeting. I just don't want to lose it because he spent the time, invested it, and we said we we're going to discuss this in a community meeting. Yeah, so th there was this thread on Slack where he posted it, yeah. and I added some of my thoughts to to what like is going on in the document, like his questions basically raised in it. And the last update he gave was that he wants to put together um, uh, this example in a repository on which we can iterate. That was 10 days ago, so I would assume maybe he's still up to that task yeah. and okay. preparing that. Cool. Okay. All right. That is our agenda for today. However, of course, we have the any other business open floor part. Um, is there anything that you want to talk about? Something that something cool that you're doing with KCP? Uh, something that you wanted to ask the community and the press maintainers? Anything on your mind? After five times of MJ nodding his head, um, the time is over. Um, but no, um, I think that means there are no open questions, no open topics. Um, given that, I wish you all a great afternoon, evening, night, morning, depending on where you are. And I hope to see you all in two weeks on the next community call. Have a good one, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.